welcome. My name is Lexi Chong and here I like to talk about luxury makeup and food day brushes. And today we have another episode of a bunch of brushes. This is my brush series that runs every other Sunday. And today's video has been requested by a couple of people who wanted to get a little bit more information about brush shape and how you decide what brush to use for which type of application, what is going to be best in specific situations. So I'm going to do my best to answer that. I hope this is helpful, but I want to start by saying that application with makeup brushes, this is a completely individual personal thing. So what some person likes may not be, you know, what another person likes to use a specific brush for. And today we're looking specifically at the shapes, maybe the sizes of, you know, the brush heads and so forth, but we're not necessarily the fiber. So when I say that there's no wrong way to use a particular brush, you know, again, as always, you know, using squirrel hair in a cream product, technically a no-no because you could damage the bristles. That's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the actual shape and size of the brush. There's no wrong way to use that provided you are using materials that are appropriate for the brush to keep it, you know, in good condition. So without further ado, let's start. And we're gonna start off with the round brush. The round brush is probably the most versatile brush shape. And what we're looking at with a round brush is there is a completely round ferrule. So the ferrule itself is like a complete circle, 360 degrees. There's no oval or anything like that. So it's completely round. A lot of the times you're going to see more of a domed brush shape. That's not always the case. There are like flat top kabukis and things like that as well. But for most round brushes, you'll see kind of this dome shape with the larger brushes, these are typically gonna be your face powder brushes. And these brushes, depending on the size, you know, they are very versatile. So this is the Chikahodo PFO brush. And this is something you can use for face powder. For me in particular, I like to use this one specifically for face powder because you can see that compared to my face shape, it is a fairly large brush. So it's easy to cover a lot of ground very quickly. However, some people really like to use a brush this size to put blush on. For me, it's a little bit too big. I do have kind of a smaller head, so it doesn't work quite as well on me. But if you're working with a lighter br uh, blush shade and you're looking for kind of like more of an overall wash of color or it's like one of those blush highlights and you just kind of want to get that whole area, a, a brush this shape and size works really well to give you a soft finish in a larger area. So again, it, it is a very versatile shape. Now, some other powder brushes I have that are also around, this is the Surat face brush. You can see that this one is gonna be a little bit smaller um, overall. And this would be a size that for me would work better for doing you know that lighter blush application. So a brush like this would work really well for blush. It works well for powder. You could use this for like contour and so forth as well. Now for me personally, you can see that these brush bristles, sorry, these bristles are a little bit longer. So you can see how much it bends. So personally, I don't use a ton of bronzer. And when I do, I use it more as a little bit of a, a contour shade. So kind of like right here, I want to be a little bit more targeted. So something like this is just a little bit too flexible for, for me. However, other people who like to bronze like all over and so forth really do prefer brushes this style and shape as well. Now, compared to this is the La Bouche Rouge uh, powder brush, you can see that the bristles here are going to be much shorter. And with these shorter bristles, you have a little bit more control. And it's going to give you a little bit more of a dense application because of this shape and size. Again, it works well for blush, it works well for all over powder, but because there is a little bit less flex and give with these bristles, because they are shorter in length, I'm able to use this for a bronzer or contour product. So I think one of the things that you want to look at is you know the length of the bristles. Now, this brush here, this is the Chikahodo P8, and you can see that we have much, much longer bristles 
than any of these other brushes here. I actually have not used this yet. I've just been staring at it for a few weeks, but this one's technically not round. If you look very closely at first glance, it might appear to have a round ferrule, but it is an oval ferrule. And that actually starts to get into the flat round category. And one of the things I wanna mention first about these longer bristles, when you have something with these longer bristles like this, this is what's gonna be ideal for like a finishing powder. So something you wanna get that really light dusting for. And the bigger the, the brush, the better it is for all over the face. You can have brushes like this that are much smaller. For example, if you had an eye brush with really long um, bristles like this, then you would use it more for like an overall blend. So let's say you had an eye brush that, you know, had incredibly longer bristles as well, okay? And you had this kind of shape, this, <laughs> this shape, but much smaller for an eye brush, right? So if you had longer bristles on that, because of the length of the bristles in comparison to the actual brush, this is something that as you are sweeping it over your face, you're picking up product you know, very gently along the entire fiber. So it's going to be really conducive to kind of spreading and blending those products. So a lot of blender brushes you see are a little bit longer in brush hair. Let me show you one. So like this here is the Refer 16. You can see that it's gonna be longer. Now, because again, it's still, you know, it's an eye brush, so obviously it's not gonna be as long as something like this. So it's gonna have a little bit more flex and give than some other eye brushes, but definitely nothing to this extent. However, if you're looking at something like the Surat, this is the Moyen Smoky Eye Brush. You can see this has really long bristles. You can see how much it bends. Brushes like these, anything that has really long bristles compared to the actual brush size, and purpose, that's going to be something that you want to use for blending or finishing. So for example, the Surat brush, I like, I like to use it for blending the eyeshadow. You can blend things in the crease, but you can also blend things on the mobile lid using it back and forth. And these longer bristles will attach to the product and help move it in a very, very soft fashion. So it's, it's not going to be a powerhouse mover. It's for more of that soft watercolor type effect. Whereas something like this, you can see it has the longer bristles, but it's more densely packed. This is gonna be more of a buff and blend type of brush. So moving on to the flat round shape. And again, this is a flat round technically, but it's still a little bit rounder than flatter. But these types of brushes, also known as more of a paddle style brush, these are definitely ideal for more of like paintbrush type motion for finishing powder if you've got longer bristles or you can also see these oftentimes in like a foundation brush. These are two brushes that can be used for foundation. These have a pinched ferrule. You've got the rounded shape at the top. Because these have a shorter bristle, they are ideal for kind of like stippling and painting on products. So this is also going to be, you know, it's densely packed, so you can use it for like contour and so forth. This is the Chikahoto T11. It's an incredibly versatile brush. You can use this for liquids and powders. I like to use it for foundation. It also works great for uh, any sort of like cream, contour, or bronze products because it's got this shape that fits here really well. It also works great for powders. So a brush that has this pinched ferrule here, you know, you've got some versatility because you can use this kind of wider section here to get, kind of paint things on, right? And then you can turn it to get a little bit more precision. And then if you wanna buff that out, you can turn it again so that you're getting that wider edge. So what I like to do, one of the things when I use like a, a cream contour product with this, I like to dab it on with my fingers and I take it the more narrow way going this way. And then after I kind of have that spread out a little bit, then I turn it and kind of buff out those edges a little bit. In between, before I actually turn it, I do like to wipe off anything excess on my microfiber cloth. So just something to note there. Now you can see something like this. This is the Refer 24 brush, and you can see that they have a similar shape, 
but this is going to be, you know, much fluffier. It's bigger overall. And because of the fluffiness of this, again, you can also use it for a foundation because it is so fluffy and you can see how nicely rounded it is at the top here. This is going to give you more of a softer buffed finish versus more of a painted finish if you use this with a liquid foundation. I typically use this as a bronzer brush because it, again, fits very nicely in the area that I want to target and then I can turn it to buff it out. You can use this with creams as well. I typically use this particular one with uh, powders just because it's my personal preference. But a brush like this also works really well for blush. Now, because it is a little bit more ten densely packed and the bristles are a little bit shorter, it is going to apply the color in a little bit more concentrated. So, so I would use this more for either buffing out a blush that let's say I put on too much of a deep color and I kind of want to buff, buff it in a little bit more. You can use something like this for that because it will give you a softly buffed finish or I use it with a lighter shade. So those are just some potential applications. And again, we're looking at the length of the fibers and how fully packed those bristles are, as well as the shape. So the pinched ferrule helps give you a little bit more versatility as to you know how you hold and use the brush. And again, the amount of pressure you apply will also give you a little bit more control over how how much pigment actually transfers. Now, just taking a look at some flat top round ferrule brushes. This is the Westman Atelier Blender Brush. And I personally like to use this to blend out the Westman Atelier Foundation Stick. You can see there's a lot of give, so it's going to kind of blend it out softly. You're not, you know, you're, you're not moving a ton of product at once, so you're able to get a softer, smoother finish with that. So I like to use it for that. However, technically this one was designed to use with the, um, the highlights. Let me show you which ones. The Westman Atelier Super Loaded Tinted Highlights. So this is kind of like a cream product. It's more of like a, a hybrid, a cream hybrid, but you would put that in there and this was intended to kind of buff that nicely into the cheek. So in general, what I would like to say about this type with flat top brushes, most of the time they are great at buffing products. Now, obviously if you have something with incredibly long bristles, you're not really gonna be able to buff things in very well. But if you look at brushes like this, this is the Chantecaille Buff and Blur. We have the, one of my hairs, sorry, one of the Coyotes. I think this is the F07. You can see how small this is. I like to use this one for blush. We have the Coyoto F04. All of these have kind of this specific ratio of the width of the, or the diameter of the brush head with the bristle length. And this is kind of what you're looking for, for a great buffing brush. And just another one here, this is the Sonuji Face One. So again, we're looking at kind of the diameter in comparison to the bristle length. And when you get that sweet spot, that's how it's gonna give you, you know, a great buff. So if we're looking at these three in particular, you can see that they pretty much have the same bristle length and the same diameter for these two here. Let's put down the blush one. And if you compare it with the Sonia G, you can see that the bristles are a little bit longer. And if you look at the diameter of the ferrule, you can see it's a smaller ferrule. So this is actually fanning out or blooming out a little bit more. This is actually gonna be a little bit more compact. So these two brushes are going to be denser. So what that means then is for these particular shapes here, these are going to move product a little bit more firmly than the Sonia G Face One. This, again, being dyed coat, actually you wanna use this for powders anyway, but that's gonna make this a little bit more ideal because with a powder, most of the time you wanna have more of a softer buff. So you're not moving product underneath it or you're not moving too much at one time. So in this case, the longer bristles and the smaller diameter of the ferrule allows for a wider top up here, which will allow it to have a little bit more flex and movement 
creating a softer buff, great for finishing powders. Whereas both the Westman Atelier and the Chantecaille Buff and Blur, you can see that they are gonna be more dense and more tightly packed. They're not gonna have quite as much give or flex. And these are gonna be great then for liquids or for a powder application where you're trying to really intensify. So for me, I like to use these with powder products. I will use them as a base product. So like a powder foundation, or um, I've been using the Sicily Blur Expert powder recently. So any sort of like base product that you wanna get a lot of coverage with, something that's more dense like this is gonna work really well for that. These do work for finishing powder as well. However, you have to be a little bit more careful because the denseness allows it to move more product. So you wanna be a little bit more gentle if you're using it with as a finishing powder compared to something like this, which you can see this moves quite a bit on my face, whereas this really does not. So, you know, those are just things to keep in mind. And again, the reason for that is the diameter of the ferrule in relation to the length of the bristles. Now, I just wanted to compare the F, I believe it's F07 from Coyoto with the Sonia G Face One. You can see that the Face One has, you know, longer bristles, but the actual diameter of the ferrule on the two of these is pretty comparable. I don't know if they're exactly the same. I think the face one has a slightly bigger diameter, but it's pretty similar. And you can see how much more tightly packed the Coyoto one is compared to this. Now the Coyoto is synthetic fibers, which also kind of maintain this shape a little bit more easily than the dyed goat hair does. This has more of the potential to bloom like this one has here. But because even though they have like almost the same diameter, because of the bristle length here, you can see how much more give it has than the F07. So I hope that makes sense. Now, because of this size and the denseness of this, it's going to be ideal, in my opinion, for cream products because you can really move that cream product fairly quickly and efficiently before it dries and sets. So for me, I like to use this for cream blush products. That's, that's my main purpose. It also works for like cream contours and things like that. But because of the round shape, instead of the flat round shape, I prefer it more for something on the cheek compared to something where I'd like to be a little bit more targeted. So I prefer like a flat round shape for contour and bronzer compared to um, blush application. So it's a personal preference. And again, I urge you to try your brushes that you have in different ways to see what suits you best. Everybody's face shape is going to allow them to have different preferences. You know, so this is all completely personal. Now, before we move on to a completely different shape, I just want to go over a few eye brushes with similar shapes. So you can see here that the Refer 16 and this is the Esam V34, these both have round ferrules and these are crease brushes. Again, we've got longer bristles essentially for the diameter of the ferrule. And you can see that the Refer one has more tapered edges compared to the Esam, which is more of a flat top. Both of these are great for blending. Because of this flat top here, you're really going to move product like this, whereas the refer, because of the tapered edges, you have a little bit more flexibility in how it blends. You're gonna get a softer blend versus a firmer blend. So if you wanna move product a little bit more quickly, then the Esam is ideal for that compared to the refer, just because of this flat top and the you know, the way that it moves. It's also, you know, a synthetic brush too. So, you know, the bounce back of the fibers is going to be a little bit more harsh compared to the natural fibers. This is the Sonia G Crease one. And again, we've got more of that tapered, you know, round ferrule brush, but you can see this is gonna be much shorter. These are still going to be used for creases. So in general, if you've got a round ferrule eye brush, most of the time they're gonna be used for crease work or if it is a very small one, you can use it for like pencil and uh, lower lash line and inner corner highlight and so forth. But these, again, are gonna depend on your bristle length. Longer bristles are gonna be more for blending, whereas shorter bristles are gonna be more firm for precision work. And just to show you a couple, this is the Sony G Pencil One. 
and the Pencil Pro. And you can see that they both have the round barrels, but much smaller bristles. These would be precision work. So for both of these, I like these for a lower lash line, inner corner. And again, you're just looking at the taper to decide you know, how much precision you want. Obviously the Pencil One has more of a point here. So this is gonna be better for smaller areas versus the Pencil Pro, which is gonna be great for moving shadow in a small area, but not as precisely as the Pencil One. And then we also have pinched ferrule eyeshadow brushes. And these are in general going to be in the soft shader category. And there are different sizes. We have things like the Sonia G Jumbo Blender. This one here is the Worker 2, which is kind of similar. We have the soft shader here. And you can see because of the pinched ferrule, they don't have as much flex or give. These are not things that are gonna work as well for blending or for crease work. These are what you wanna lay down your shadow with. And because of this pinch ferrule and the fact that there is, you know, quite a bit of bounce back from the fibers, this is something that you really want to more pat your color on with, and you can do small little brush strokes to blend, you know, on your lid. But because they are not quite as flexible, it's more of something you want to pat the product on. And again, the soft shader, you know, I've said this probably in every video, but this is my favorite eyeshadow brush because the undyed go hair makes it versatile with liquids, creams, and powder products. And because of this particular size in relation to my eye size, I can kind of edge it right into the crease. It's still small enough for me to get to the inner corner and I can easily lay product all over my lid with it. And it is still firm enough that I could use it on the lower lash line as well. So for me, it's a very versatile brush, but in general, pinched ferrule is going to, if you've got shorter bristles like this, it's going to be something that could promote fallout if you do a lot of like brushing sweeping motions. So you wanna apply the color more in a patty motion. And when you do use any little brush strokes like a sweeping motion, you wanna make them very small and soft. And then sometimes you will see more of the pinched ferrule with even more narrow brush head here. And this is what you're gonna see for liner brushes. So this one is the Sonia G Flat Definer. Again, because of the shape and the amount of flex or give or rather lack thereof, for this, you can use this to kind of tap things on for like the inner corner and so forth, but you can also use this for precision work with lining. Now, brushes like this are what you're also gonna see for eyeliner brushes, as well as lip liner brushes, and also some concealer brushes. Now, this one you see, you know, you've got kind of this more arrowhead shape. This is a rounded arrowhead, but again, this is gonna be for patting things out. So anything with a very narrow brush head and a pinched ferrule is generally something you're gonna wanna pat the product on with, and depending on your fiber, you're going to determine whether you want to use powders, creams, or liquids. This one here is synthetic. It's tack on. This is essentially designed specifically for concealer. And the smaller it is, the better it works for, um, you know, spot concealing and so forth, or for getting more precisely under the eye. Now for lip liner brushes, this is the Wayne Goss 07, which is actually my favorite lip brush because again, you've got very stiff hairs here pinched ferrule, it's narrow, so you're not getting a lot of movement, and it's small enough that I have plenty of control to get a precise line. This one here is the Chikahodu AF8, which is a lip brush, and you can see it has longer bristles. This would be more for painting lipstick on versus the shorter bristles here, which is more for edging or lining, if that makes sense. So again, you're looking at the length of the bristles, the bristle here, if you're using a longer one, again, you've got more of that painting motion. And let's also take a look at tapered or candlestick shape bristles. Now these can come with a round ferrule or an oval ferrule. It's not going to be tightly pinched typically, but this one here is the Chikahodu. This is the KZ05. And you can see this one has a subtle candle shape. Let's see how it tapers here but it's still gonna be on the more subtle side compared to this one, which is the KZ03. You can see it's longer, it's a little bit more taper, tapered. This one has a round ferrule versus the oval ferrule of the KZ05. 
Now I wanted to compare these because these are going to give you slightly different purposes. Because this one isn't quite as tapered, this one works really well for laying on blush. You can also use the very tip for highlight. Um, and some people do like to use this for like con contour or bronzer as well. You can also use this to apply powder specifically like in your T-zone or something like that. And because of this oval ferrule, it makes it really nice. It like presses down nicely. So you can press and do like a light sweep for kind of a light soft wash or finish. Whereas something like the KZ08 here, which is more tapered with this round ferrule, this is also known as the candlestick shape. Again, because this one has longer bristles, you can press this one down as well. And this can be used for a sweeping product and the more tapered end, you can get a very light, subtle highlight in a very specific targeted area. So typically, if you see names on brushes instead of numbers, a lot of times these are called highlight brushes because they do work very well for this, but you can also use it on its side to get kind of a wider swath. And that's great for like highlighting blushes and so forth. Now, these are also great to apply bronzer or contour. Again, if you have a product that is deep and you wanna buff it out, you just add a little bit to the tapered end here, put that on very gently, and then you can blend it by using more of the side of it. So these are both versatile for different purposes. More of this oval shape here, I think will apply, personally at least, I prefer using this for like powder if I were to apply like in the T-zone, whereas this can be done, but I find it a little bit, just a, a little bit nicer to use, more of the oval ferrule compared to this, which for the tapered candlestick with the round ferrule, I really like to use this one more for highlight, blush. I don't personally usually use it for bronzer or contour, but it is a popular use for this shape. Just some others to show you. You can see that this KZ08 has very, very long bristles and that's gonna give it a much softer finish overall. This is the Refer 19 and you've got more of this, it's a little bit more of a subtle candlestick shape just like the KZ05. And this is, at first glance, you might think it's round, but it is a very broad oval. So it is slightly ovular and again that's going to allow you to press it now because this does have shorter hand, uh, bristles here this is going to be something that you can use it feels a bit more dense so you can use this one to kind of buff things out a little bit more as well the undyed goat hair allows it to be used with creams and liquids which is my personal preference for this so if i'm taking a cream highlight i like to use the tapered edges put it here blend it with this and I also like to kind of finish off my cream blush going like this, but using the side of this is gonna give you a much softer finish than some of the other shapes that we have already discussed. So it's not one that I typically use to apply cream blush, but I will use it to kind of finish and blend in the cream blush, but it has to be mostly blended already because again, this is still gonna give you more of that soft finish so if it's already dried and set, it won't be quite as efficient with that. So I really like it more for cream highlight and for cream contour products. This will put it in really well. And because it has, you know, it's a little bit stiffer and more dense, you can give it a soft buff as well. And this is the Chikahodu Z series. I think it's the Z2. It's the, the Z series highlighting brush. And you can see that the shape of this is going to be the same as a KZ08, but it's just much smaller overall. The ratios are approximate, the, the diameter versus the length for the, the bristles for each of these are pretty comparable percentage wise. It's just that overall, this is a much larger brush. Now, because they have a similar ratio, I would use this in a similar way using the tip to apply something and then the side to blend it. Because this is smaller, you're gonna use it more for more targeted areas. So it really does make a great highlighting brush. This is also something you can use for powdering under the eyes and so forth as well.
I just wanted to mention two eyeshadow brushes that I kind of skipped before. These are both round ferrules with short, dense bristles. And we looked at these a little bit with the, the um, pencil brushes, but you can see that these are going to be longer than that and they are bigger in diameter. So this is something that's great for placing product. You want to stamp this because if you were, say you're using a powder product and you try to sweep with this, you're getting fallout for sure. And that's just because of the application, not because of the product. So this is for placement, but this shape in particular is great for blending out cream products because it's dense enough to move it very, very quickly. So you can apply and then kind of buff out cream products very efficiently with these because they have a little bit of a wider diameter with shorter bristles. All right, and another shape are the angled cheek brush shape. So these two are dirty, so I apologize, but this is the Surratt Sculpting Brush, and you can see here that it has a little bit more of an exaggerated angle compared to these. This is the Coyoto one from um, Beautylish that came out for Lunar New Year, the Year of the Ox, and this is the Chickahodoo F04. So you can see that the angles on here are all slightly different, and I think that it gives them slightly different, um, you know, purposes. So something like this with more of an exaggerated angle here, because it's so short on the one side, it's giving you a little bit more control and a denser application. So again, you can see that there's not quite as much movement on this short side compared to this. Now the angled cheek brush, I don't have a lot of them, but I really like them and they are, so easy to use and for many people they are actually easier to use than a round brush because you don't have to worry about what angle you're holding the brush to get the type of finish you want it's kind of designed already into the brush so if you have a brush with a particular angle that you like it's incredibly easy to use now something like this where you've got this shorter end here that's you know much different from the longer end. You've got a lot of control here, less control at the longer end. And that makes it great for applying something more pigmented and then brushing out. And again, this has more of that pinched flat ferrule here. So you're able to turn this and get more versatility. Now, one of the reasons these angle brushes are so great is because not only do they work to, you know, apply something densely and softly in the same brush, but you can also you know, use them for a multitude of purposes. And for beginners in particular, if you're not used to using a lot of makeup brushes, it kind of takes the guesswork out of how hard to hold the brush and you know, what angle to hold it at and so forth. So it's really great for that. This one in particular, because it has such an exaggerated angle here, I like this to apply contour and I like to add a little bit of contour. I'll just kind of stamp that on because again, it's kind of got that more denseness here that doesn't flex so much, so I'll stamp it on. And then I will sweep it with the longer end to kind of brush it out and then wipe my brush off. And then I turn it for a finishing buffing. So, you know, I just think it's a really great brush. And this one you can also use for blush I personally like to use it like this. And then you can use just the tip even for highlight. So if you're looking for like a brush for traveling, kind of like a jack of all trades kind of thing, an angle brush is a great suggestion. Now, some other ones, you can see that these are very different. You can see compared to the Surratt, this F04 here is going to have more of a gradual climb. So, and it's, it doesn't, you can see that the longer bristles here, it's kind of like a sharp edge on the Surratt versus here on the F04, it curves down again, it tapers down. So this is gonna give you a softer finish. If we're looking at the bristles overall, you can also see that the Chickahodo F04 is longer overall. So you can see there's a lot more flex, there's a lot more give, and the diameter is gonna be a little bit bigger. This is gonna be an oval ferrule here. So something like this, you know, again, it works fantastic for blush. It works great for contour. You could use this for powdering your face and so forth. But this one in particular, because it has more of that rounded edge, is not gonna work as well for highlight as something like the Surratt, where it has more of that sharp, uh, you know, drop at the end. 
And then comparing all of these, we have the Coyoto here, and you can see that this is angled, but it's a very soft angle and you've got very long bristles. So this one, again, we've got more of that flat pinched ferrule. This one you can actually use to kind of paint if you want. And it's, you know, it's such a gradual angle that you could treat it as a powder brush in that style. But because of this angle here, it also, you know, we got the shorter end here. You can see that it moves very, very easily this way, but not so easily this way. So it's going to give you a really soft finish and a little bit of a wider area. This is one of my favorite bronzer brushes personally, and it works fantastically on the wider side for blush as well. So I think these are just very versatile and I think the angle that you want kind of de determines, you know, it, whatever angle you choose is going to determine how you like to use it. So something like this I use for specific products such as, you know, either a contour or a highlight. You know, this is definitely a jack of all trades angle brush or something like the Coyoto, which has a much more gradual angle and longer bristles I'm going to use for softer finish applications. And I think depending on what your purpose is, that's going to determine what style of angled brush that you would like. But I think they are fantastic and they're definitely worth trying. And next up we have the fan brushes. So this is the Sculpt One from Sonya G. You can see it is a massively thick, big overall fan brush. Now, a lot of people like to use this for bronzer because again, it fits in that curve very well. You can flip it if you'd like. And it's, you know, it, it's just, it's kind of fun to use. So I personally, you know, it's a little bit big for me to use in that area for something that is a little bit more dense. Now, if you look at a fan brush, you'll see that it's kind of got this curved edge on the ferrule and they are going to be pinched, which allows the bristles to kind of splay out. And again, the density is going to be determined a little bit also by the bristle length and how wide this is here. So this one is a very dense wide brush, which gives it, you know, plenty of flex going this way, but not so much going back and forth like this, which will allow you to control it a little bit. So you can definitely apply product like this and kind of buff it a little bit more with the wider side. For me personally, I actually, I don't use this brush very much to be honest, but when I do use it, I usually use it more for a, a finishing powder. If it's a finishing powder that I don't mind going in a little bit heavier with, but again, this is a very popular brush for bronzer and contour shades. Now, a slightly smaller version of that is the Sculpt 2, and you can see that it is still going to be fairly dense, fairly thick. It's wide here. This one is dyed goat hair, so it's a little bit softer, has a little bit more flex, and because the ratio is still fairly similar between these brushes, they perform fairly similarly. The, the bristles on this are slightly longer in relation. Um, you know, it's slight, the ratio is not exact, but they will perform similarly. This is gonna be on a smaller size. And then this is the Sculpt 4 from Sonya G. And I wanted to share this one with you because you can see it's very similar to the Sculpt 2 in width. It's slightly more narrow, okay? But the length of the bristles are fairly similar. The Sculpt 2, they're slightly longer. But what's different about this is that it is an angled fan brush. So it's going to bend more in this way compared to this way. But, um, you know, that's going to also determine how you use it. So this one here actually will allow you to be a little bit more precise. And again, I actually think this one is really nice for bronzer or contour. I like this fan brush for that. It's also great for giving you a soft wash of a highlighting blush. I find it personally a little bit too wide on my face for a regular blush, but a highlighting blush where I want to get that whole cheek area, this is a nice one for that. And I like to keep the longer end up here to get more of that softer finish closer to the eye and a little bit more concentration of color down here at the cheekbone to provide a little bit more of a natural contour if that makes sense. So a brush like this can be very versatile but 
it's gonna have kind of like a specific purpose, if that makes sense. So you can use it in multiple ways, but you're pretty much going to target, you know, a specific type of product with it, if that makes sense. And last up, we have less dense fan brushes. This is the Refer 20, which is one of my favorite brushes. And the Fan Pro, you can see I've been using this one. But I wanted to share these because you can see that they are both gonna be a little bit more narrow here. They're less dense. Now this Fan Pro, because it has shorter bristles, you can see there's not quite as much flex or give. It's going to be um, something that you would, I use it for highlight. So I just kind of brush it here. And I use this one for highlights that are a little bit firmer press in the pan. So, you know, you want like a soft color from it, but this denser brush allows it to pick up very easily. Something a little bit more powdery where I want to get a soft wash. I like to use something like the Refer 20 here, which, you know, is a little bit wispier because again, we've got the longer fibers and it's pretty narrow here. So it's going to bend a lot more. You can also use this for blush, but for me, I personally like to use it for highlight. And these fan brushes, any of these like wispier ones, also work really well if you have fallout from eyeshadow. They work well to kind of clear that away or swipe away any like remaining like residue or fallout or anything on your face, finishing powders and so forth. And the last fan brush I wanted to share, this is from the Koyoto Premium Series. I don't remember what the number is, but you can see how much longer these bristles are than any of the other fan brushes I've talked about. It's narrow, but you can see that the way the bristles are placed in here, they're more upright compared to fanned out. This in particular is designed for finishing. So taking off any fallout here, it's works well for highlight as well. Again, you're gonna get a subtle application because it's so, so long and wispy, but it is technically a finishing brush for applying a loose layer of finishing powder or highlight. So just wanted to share, you know, that. So that is everything I have for you today. And I hope this was helpful. In general, you're looking at the length of the brush hairs compared to the diameter of the ferrule and the shape of the ferrule to determine how best it's going to work. And then what products you want to use it for is completely up to you. Definitely play around with your brushes, try them in many different ways and see what you prefer. But I hope my suggestions were helpful. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any requests for future brush videos, please be sure to leave them down below or DM me at Alexis Zhang. And I appreciate you watching. So if you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And I'll see you very soon. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy.